spotlight. Uh, I'm in the spotlight now, huh? Okay. Uh, see, I get all nervous. You know, like in the other room, uh, there was like 180 people, and all the hands were lowered, and they were like, uh, everybody stand up and say something on the mic, and then only like eight people put their hand up, and I'm like, should I put my hand up? Should I put my hand up? I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my hand up. Then when it's my turn, I'm just going to leave and say I got disconnected. But no. Uh, you know, um, I think coming to Islam, you know, you have to uh, come out of the closet and not be ashamed of it anymore. It's, that's that's what basically what I said in the mic, because I, uh, I became a Muslim, I got the swine flu, and I'm just getting over it. Now, everybody who knew me before when I was sick, I was always like, mm, you know, now this is the real me, the energetic me. But, um, why I became a Muslim? Truth. The truth about things. You know, when I first started to come to him, I, I just, I didn't know anything about Islam up until, like, uh, about a, two weeks ago. So, I went into the Dawa room. A week before I became Muslim to ask questions and wondering about it and everything else. But, um, from the start, from, the, from birth, I can talk mm -hmm. all day, just so you know. So, I have no problem telling my life story. But, um, no, I'm not going to do that. But, uh, I'm. I came to Islam because it makes sense. Um, you know, when I when I first came into the Dawa room, I told people I was an atheist, but uh, I wasn't really an atheist. I uh, I believed that there was a creator. I just didn't believe in uh, the way it was perceived in Christianity. Because growing up, uh, my mother was a Baptist, and she w raised me. As Baptist, she made me go to a uh, Christian school, church twice on Sunday, Wednesday, visitation on Thursday, Saturday mornings, and Friday nights. I'm a one week, one week. The week before, the first week, I uh, I asked a bunch of questions. <laughs> so, yeah. So what was I saying? Um, yeah, when I went in the Dawa room, I, uh, I told people I was an atheist because cause I, I don't really like to tell people I believe in God because they all think that I don't want people to think that I'm crazy because my idea of God isn't, uh, my idea of God was that God is the creator, the all-knowing, and so if God, the creator, the all-knowing, why does he have to be everywhere all at once. That doesn't make sense. If God, why would God uh, create us in His image? I mean, come on, you can tell that's man-made. You know, uh, so many things, so many things I can think of. Even before I became Muslim, I studied uh, Buddhism a lot. It just didn't make too much sense. It's like it's just a bunch of random stuff piling together. You know. Uh, are you really recording this? I'm just saying random things. Why can't people ask me questions and I answer them? It's not being recorded? Cool. Can somebody just ask me questions in text and then I can answer them? Because I'm just saying random things. Seriously. Subhanallah. I see, uh, I lied about that. It's being recorded. Uh, let me tell you something. Because <laughs> I knew you were going to say you weren't going to continue if I told you you were being recorded. Let me tell you something, brother. Uh, your hesitation and you going all over the place only means one thing, that you're honest. And that is what is very important to us. Right, Sister Maryam? MashaAllah. Wallahi, I'm so proud of this, brother. 
Subhanallah, I love him already for the sake of Allah. Wallahi, Wallahi, so much. I'm happy. I didn't trick you. I didn't trick you. I just said, no, no, I'm not recording. But uh, what I meant to say, I'm taping. <laughs> so I was just joking with you. Okay. Uh, forgive me. Listen. Uh, American Dragon. I see. Uh, your story has to be different than all the others. You see? I... I Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, only he can guide, not us, not any chat room, not any topic or, or a book. You see, Allah showed you the truth, it's up to you now to build on that. Uh, you may not know much about Islam, but you will learn. Uh, you know, I really want you to honor us by you staying with us here. Uh, we don't have a scholar, uh, uh, you know, we don't have uh, uh, someone who's extremely knowledgeable. But we can definitely manage to help one another, inshallah, especially a Muslim like you, who's just learning the ABCs of Islam. If you were to die today, after you took your shahada, you will go straight to Jannah, inshallah. You are better than all of us, believe me, with all that you have. You have nothing. You probably have nothing except shahada. But if you are to die today, inshallah, you will be in Jannah or we will be tested. Us who knows a lot in comparison to you, we will be tested and maybe or may not go to Jannah. We'll go to hell first and then to Jannah. So, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave you, yes, Allah gave you another chance. Once you utter the Shahada, you're a Muslim, you're a submitter. That's it. You testified that no one is worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad being his prophet and the last messenger. Like all the prophets. We love our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We love all the Prophet and Messenger of Allah. To us, they are all the same as far as the same level. Okay, we cannot say we love this more than that. Okay, it's up to Allah to distinguish. But we love our Prophet alayhi salatu he, he who brought us the, the complete message. Not Islam. Islam started since Adam, our father Adam. Okay, and they call themselves Muslims, submitters to Allah. They did not call themselves Christians or Jews or atheists or what. They called themselves uh, uh, submitters to Allah Azza wa Jal, Muslimin. The word Muslim is not new to to uh, the world, starting with Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. He just brought uh, uh, the complete Islam. It was completed. Okay, Alhamdulillah. So, getting back to your su subject, you're doing wonderful. I mean, I'm not sure how old are you. You don't have to tell us. But tell us what, what life was like before last week. I mean, what, what did you believe in? You were an atheist. You believed in a God. What kind of God you believed in? We're not going to laugh at you. We're, we're here to, to, to enjoy your story, inshallah. So, worry not about the recording, really, Afi. You're being excellent. I was, well, I am so proud to, to hear what you just said, you know. Think of it. Uh, think of it as if you're talking to yourself. I mean, there's only three of us that's listening to you, and believe me, we're we've heard so many stories. So it's not like something we're looking at you. We don't even know where you live and what you look like. So tell it as it is. No matter how it came out, it's definitely going to come out wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for, for Wallahi. May Allah reward you, inshallah. And uh, it's all yours. Take your time and do not do not be afraid. Okay, just a mic. <laughs> you're not even holding it. Okay, it's your mic. Salam alaikum. I said, I told people uh, in the real world and on Pale Talk that I was atheist, but I actually believed in a God, but I was ashamed to be in the category of believing in God because all the other people who said they believed in God but don't do godly things or whatever but uh, uh, coming to Islam wasn't that hard for me I didn't I didn't do I'm not really I wasn't really a bad guy but uh, the way I talk, I talked to somebody in a dollar and uh, in private PM and he was explaining to me Islam and I was explaining to them uh, dialogue between Muslims and Christians um, it was a private PM though, so um, I was explaining to them what I think about God and what I think about God personally. And this person told me, "Well, 
that's what Muslims think. So, uh, so my idea of of God uh, about a, before I became a Muslim was I believe that God was the creator. God was the uh, all knowing. So, uh, in the Christian world, I was believe, or I mean, I was taught that uh, God is everywhere. Uh, Jesus died for you, you know, God sent the Son and all that stuff. But uh, I gave that up at an early age. I'm 26 now. I'm nine, I was 19 when I uh, stepped away from the uh, Christian world. But, um, you know, uh, I, I we were always taught that uh, we were made in the image of God, you know. Just that alone, saying that we were made in the image of God, proves that that idea is man-made, you know? I mean, I, used, I would always tell people, or try to tell people, that uh, uh, how dare we, who are we to even question God, you know? I mean, can you really, how can you do that? I mean, the creator of everything. I mean, we look up at the sky, we have these hu this Hubble telescope that looks at the stuff and then we pretend like we know what's going on in the universe. And we pre then we call ourselves smart people, you know? And we question God, you know? What is this? Is, it, is this some kind of joke? Some modern joke? So, um, you know, Islam is a... Is it, I, I haven't found a flaw in Islam at all, you know, before I, before I started to come to the room and asking people about Islam, I didn't know anything about, well, I knew a few things, I thought the, uh, the women in Islam who wore the hijabs, I know what they're called now, um, I thought they were ninjas, because, uh, when I went to college, I met this, uh, Muslim, this Muslim girl, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I had this, like, I always had this respect for her, you know, because she never talked to me. She never talked to me. I was like, hey, what's your name? Who are you? What are you doing? Why do you wear that? She would never say a word to me. Like, why isn't this girl talking to me? These other girls are looking at me, flirting with me, talking to me. She won't talk to me. I don't want to talk to these other girls. I want to talk to this girl. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. At that point, I didn't really have an interest in it because of other things, but, um, uh, Islam, that is. But, um, and, um, brain fart. <laughs> um, besides what I said about the girls wearing the hijabs, growing up, we would see the cartoons on TV of the uh, Arabs and the horses chasing down people and whatever not. You guys probably all know about this, right? But, um, that's all I really knew. Oh, yeah, and the, and the terrorists, you know? The terrorists, yeah. Almost two billion Muslims in the world, and, man, can you imagine if there were two billion terrorists in the world? Seriously. Can you imagine how messed up this world would be? Well, I know the world is quite messed up as it is, but uh, can you imagine how much worse it would be? But, uh, Shaitan is good, but he's not that good. But, uh, <laughs> oh, man. Somebody asked me some questions. I don't know what to say. Oh, yeah. So... I gave up Christianity at 19 because it made absolutely no sense. Like, uh, and even, even, even if I could find a little tiny bit of sense in it, you know, I still find it as polytheism and idol worship. Not idol worship as in the Trinity. Idol worship as in the uh, preachers. And people are the biggest hypocrites ever, you know. Because we used to have these w revival meetings, I think they're called. It's been a long time. So we used to have these revival meetings, you know. I'm from New York, and we would travel down south to these revival meetings, you know. We've got to go see Brother whatever his name is. 
He's the best preacher ever. We love him. You know, uh, and, and the theory of this guy, one of these people that I went and saw, was that uh, Marilyn Manson was the Antichrist. UFOs are the demons in... You guys know the drill. But, uh, you know, it's like... Are people are really listening to this just because this guy jumps around and dances around on the podium. We're supposed to listen to this and be, be his fan or something. Put money in the jar. I mean, come on. You know, even just for my basic uh, deprived Christian education, I still have. Some working, something working upstairs there, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, yeah. So after giving up uh, Christianity, totally. I mean, you know, I was kind of at a stage where I was probably depressed in my life. So, um, yeah. I looked into various religions. Uh, f one of the first ones I think I looked into after giving up Christianity was uh, paganism, Wicca, or whatever, New Age stuff, you know, looking into that. That didn't last too long, trust me. That was, that was probably the, one of the stupidest subjects I have ever looked into, you know. You know, you like open this book, right? It's like, uh, yeah, and choosing a hierarchy of gods like okay I don't like this guy he's look he sounds mean I mean this god yeah this god he sounds nice I think I'm gonna worship this god but I, I don't know his his wife doesn't look too hat too nice so I don't want to worship him if I have to worship her you know, I mean what's going on what are, what's really going through people's heads here why would anybody put why, why would anybody publish this stuff but uh, <clears throat> uh then uh, I think after I got into that I uh, got into Buddhism Buddhism um you know uh, Buddhism, Buddhism kind of straightened me out a little bit in life though I can't say it's 100% bad you know maybe 99.9% .9 bad but uh <clears throat> Uh, I found flaws in Buddhism, many flaws, you know, science has found many flaws in Buddhism, you know, I watched this, uh, sh I watched this thing on YouTube called Buddhism, or the science in Buddhism, it said, one of the things that said in there was that, uh, it was talking about, uh, uh, the emptiness of atoms, the emptiness of atoms, right? So, Buddhism says that everything is emptiness, you know, there's nothing where it's all illusion or whatever, so that would make 100% emptiness. Science has proven that atoms are 99% empty, which would make, give that a one cent flaw. So even 1% even flaw isn't good for me. Sorry, that was my alarm clock. I woke up three hours early. Sue me. But my alarm clock went off and my screensaver went on at the same time. Good luck, huh? What's the luck of that? Uh, <clears throat> what was I saying? Yeah, 1% flaw. You know, if there's a flaw in anything, I don't want anything to do with it. I mean, religious-wise. But, um... Look at him as long, there is no flaws. It's perfect. It's perfect for me. You know. What do you mean back? You haven't been listening? Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. <coughs> uh yeah. I can't accept flaws when it comes to religion, so you're not done. No. I'm still rambling. Don't get too happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that concludes my story. So, 
I accepted Islam, I became a Muslim, and then I got the swine flu. So now I'm recuperating and I'm ready to, uh, yeah, good start, swine flu. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Um, so now that I'm getting better, I'm ready to go all out, you know, ready to study, ready to learn, ready to reflect, ready to teach, spread the, spread it all around, you know, no shame. So I'm going to get off of the mic, so I'm going to come everyone. That's a long. Uh, wow. I, I've, I've gathered most of what you say, Akhi. Even I was in prayer, a little distracted and stuff for the law. I shouldn't be distracted. Uh, wow, that's beautiful. You know, you make sense, subhanAllah. It's called, it's called fitra. You know, the, you, you speak with fitra. You know what fitra means uh, in Arabic? It's the... Let's see, what's the right word, Sister uh, Miriam? Yeah, I'll ask you questions, definitely. Thank you so much, uh, Brother American uh, Dagon. Jazakallah khair. Welcome back, Akhi Knight. Good to see you. Um, what is the word for fitra, yeah, Sister Maryam? Brother Knight, what's the right word for fitra? It's the way, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us. You know, when we're, ch when we we're babies, when we are children, we have a fitra. It's a natural state of, of uh, being a human, you know. It's a natural state of how God created you. And when you grow up, you, you tend to learn all the bad stuff and the bad ways and Satan start getting into you. The pure state, right, pure state. So you were living your life and you, you still have a huge part of that pure state. And, and that, is, that is why you became Muslim and it was so easy for you to accept it. You, you were not like messed up as far as different beliefs and, and believing in Christ and the blood of Christ and all this uh, 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 nonsense. It's, uh, Christianity never made any sense to you because it doesn't make any sense to anyone with a pure fitra. It doesn't make sense to anyone with, with any kind of logic or intellect. I mean, a God killed himself to please himself. That's amazing. God killed God to please God. That's Christianity. And the thing is, they teach the thing they teach in the church has nothing to do with the Bible. If uh, if you open the Bible, you read it thoroughly, you'll discover that the Trinity is never mentioned. Uh, Jesus Himself never claimed Himself to be God. He never claimed claimed to to be divine at all. So all of the teachings. For the, of the Christians is coming from men, people, people uh, of of the church. Yeah, and why God? Why God has to be in every way, including the bathroom, everywhere, right? Including all these impure areas, because Muslims believe that God is holy. God is holy, and God, Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah, is pure. He's not. He's not going to be in the filth, the stuff for Allah, like the the Christians try to put him in. So. So it's only natural to reject it, especially you were half an atheist or whatever you want to call yourself back then. Actually, that helped you come into Islam. Otherwise, it would have been harder for you because you'll be in love with Jesus, thinking He's your Savior, and He's He's the Savior for no one, that's for sure, uh, according to the proof and facts. Uh, also, Ahi American, uh, there were 16 other saviors throughout history before Jesus. They all have names. They all share the same story of the virgin birth. Uh, they, sh they share the same exact... I mean, subhanAllah, as if you're listening to Jesus or Jesus, Jesus uh, uh, talking. Uh, not Jesus, but the Christians talking. Uh, virgin mother. Uh, uh, virgin mother. He's uh, part of God. He dies for humanity to save mankind. Uh, people worshipped him after he was cru crucified as well. And you ask any Christian and you tell them, listen, uh, this is not a new story. Right. This is not a new story. You took it from pagans. And they would just deny you. SubhanAllah. Now, if you spend a lot of time in Paltok, Ethi, it's my advice to you. Do not poison your head. 
with the hate rooms. They come up with the weirdest and the craziest thing about Islam. All of it is false. These Christians do not even know, these haters do not even know their religion and they try to teach the Muslims theirs. So my advice to you, God have shown you the way. It's up to you to come and learn and then maybe once you have enough knowledge uh, defend your deen or your, or your belief any way shape or form you like but right now you're still very fragile you don't know nothing about Islam Alhamdulillah you don't know nothing about Islam uh, if even like Muslims who live 40 years as Muslims they can get confused by some of the stuff they throw at you Right, right, that's good. You go to their hate rooms and you will wonder, is that true what they say about Islam? And I, I guarantee you, it's all false, inshallah. It's all false. It's been refuted, whatever they, all their claims, all their uh, false hadith of our Prophet Muhammad wasallam. it has been refuted a million times. And a million times, they ask the same question. And the more they have hate rooms, the more people come to Islam. Just to show you that Allah needs no one, and Allah's will will pass. It will pass. It does not depend on you or I or, or, or all the billion point five or point seven Muslims on, on the planet. It's the creator of heaven and earth who made us all without questioning us, without even asking us. You see, the whole world was, was made way before we, we were. You understand? So there was a will and there was a God who was managing all of that. He doesn't need us. So who are we to question him? And who are we to fight him? Like these haters are uh, doing in Pal Talk. So, uh, to get back to your story, Akhi, uh, if you don't mind, tell us, tell us about your family, your friends. Uh, have you told anyone? Uh, 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 did, you, did you pray yet? I mean, are you going to pray? Are you planning to pray? Uh, what have you learned? Did anyone advise you about what you should do? Um, have you read the Quran? And then I'll ask you afterwards if you answer, inshallah, these questions. The Fadl Akhi American Dragon. I'm so happy to have you here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and show you the truth path and keep you on it, inshallah, for, for, for good until you meet him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. I'm going to be honest and say that I haven't put that much effort into the prayer yet I I do plan on to I got really sick so I know it's not an excuse but um, I'm not going to lie about it I haven't put much effort into it but I do plan on it uh, you missed the world uh, can you just say the questions that you asked me in text so I can answer them one at a time on the microphone because uh, I'm oh yeah family what, what do you want to know about fa oh family um, I get it now <laughs> um, friends they think I'm weird now uh, but that's okay I don't need them they um they um and I don't know. I only had a few friends, anyways. It's not that I had problems or anything. I just didn't like hanging out with a, a whole bunch of people. Um, uh, they're into the whole uh, drug thing, you know. But uh, my family, mom says I'm going to hell. Uh, you know, I'm a bad person, horrible. You know, Jesus. You know, she's Baptist. She's Baptist to a to a core, man. Uh, my father, my father says whatever makes you happy. Now, my father, my father is an atheist. He's a flaming atheist. You know, he's a good guy. He takes care of his family, but he's an atheist. My mother and father are divorced, by the way. I know it's the whole. Baptist and atheist thing doesn't sound right, but they are atheists. See, when my when my mother and father met, you know there was no religious things going on at all, right? 
So uh, my mother found this, a friend who was a Baptist, and she got saved or whatever, and uh, really started to get into this church stuff, like hardcore. And, uh, and she, like, became this just different person, and, uh, like, it really tore my dad apart, because she was telling him things like, uh, if you don't do this or that, this or that, then this, this relationship isn't going to work out. So, my father left, you know? He just left. He, he just didn't understand what was going on, what happened, you know? There was a love, and then that love was gone. So, he left. You know, all my... Throughout well, most of my life, I blamed my father for leaving. But, uh... But, uh... <clears throat> when I got out of the Navy... When I got out of the Navy, you know, I couldn't, uh... Just be on my own, so I moved in with my father, and I asked my father, Dad, what really happened back then? What really happened between uh, you and Mom? I mean, and then he, t he told me what I just told you guys what happened, so, you know, I, kn I know that uh, I believe him, you know, so, my father is a good guy, and he, he always uh, took care of us, so... Yeah, I really hope that one day he settles down and accepts things, but, um, he's a good guy and everything, he just, his, he puts his desires before anything else, you know. Okay, what was the next question? <clears throat> one sec. Mig Dad, I cannot see your text. How do I look at things for Islam? Interesting. I like this question. Uh, well, according to Islam, my, uh, what I knew and thought about God was pretty much, to the most part, the same. So, you know, God created everything. We, we can only create what was put here from what, wait, we can only create things from what he created and put here for us, yeah, <laughs> slapping myself, uh, so, you know, looking at the creation and everything, you know, knowing that I'm part of the one true religion, you know, uh, man, I'm just putting the wrong words in there. But, uh, just looking at the creation and looking how just awesome everything is, you know? How awesome this creation is. It's just amazing, you know? There's just so many things to be grateful for. You know? Even if something really, really bad happens, you know? You know what you can look forward to afterwards, after this is all gone. You know, like after you're gone, you know. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm what you would call a, a dreamer, not a dreamer. Well, I have quite an imagination. I can take the smallest thing and build a wild scenario around it, emotional scenario. You know, it's crazy sometimes how my mind works, but. You know, what was the point of me saying that? Uh, <clears throat> well, when I was sick, when I was sick, there was I wasn't just laying around and everything. I was doing studies online for my from what I for my new faith and everything. So, um, um, you know, I was reading the story about this, uh, this. Uh, was it? I was reading a story about this guy that was a slave. You know, he was captured in Africa and brought over to America. And uh, <clears throat> he earned his freedom 
for the things that he for the things that he could do, you know, because he was a Muslim. He uh, mm-hmm. he recited the Quran. He uh, he prayed uh, regularly, you know. He earned his freedom because of the things he could do because he was an educated guy, and uh, and he told himself and he told everybody else. Do you regret? I mean, not do you regret? Do you hate the people who did this to you? And he said, no. You know, Allah wills. I mean, yeah, no. He, uh, if Allah wills me to be here, then that's it. That's all. That's all I need to know. That's it. You know, that when I heard that story, it uh, the first thing that went through my head was, you know. I need to tell everybody that I know that I'm a Muslim. Tell everybody. <laughs> you know? If this guy can do it, I mean, what, why can't everybody else? You do need to tell everybody. Yes. Must know. Um, so, anyways, continuing the story. So, this guy earned his freedom and was sent to England to meet the... Uh, the king and queen, etc. <clears throat> so they all liked him and everything. So they uh, they wanted to paint his picture, and uh, and so they uh, they took uh, they had him dressed up in some uh, some English suit or whatever, and. and they were like, we want to draw you in your native dress. What's it look like so we can make it? Well, you probably, he said, well, you probably won't be able to make it. So let me explain it to you. And, they, and the painter said, we can, how do you expect us to paint something that we have never seen? And the Muslim said, uh, the Muslim said, how can you paint your God that you have never seen? You have all, in the, throughout your country, you have pictures of your gods and everything up all around you guys, you know, like, how can you do this? And you can't even imagine something that I'm going to tell you, my native dress, something that exists in this world, you know. I know this has nothing to do with the whole story before, but I thought it was kind of funny. But, uh, <clears throat> not, well, true, but also funny. Alright, next question, please. Screensaver. Grr. <clears throat> See, people ask me questions. I answer the question, then I just go off and ramble on and ramble on and ramble on. And ramble on, and ramble on. So, don't be afraid to doubt me if I'm rambling on. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody can ask questions. It's okay. Okay. Salam alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You're doing excellent, Afi. No, no, you're not rambling on. You're just being yourself. You're describing yourself, your life and all. Uh, well, thank you for answering all the questions. Um, as far as the prayer, I think uh, the prayer uh, is this the most important thing in Islam after after uh, uh, Shahada? And easy does it. You know, no one is expecting you to go full speed ahead. You know, in Islam, you must take it easy, so you won't be overwhelmed. Uh, no, uh, in Islam, we do things the way Allah and His Prophet taught us to. But you can always like ask Allah. You know, Christians, Christians. Uh, consider praying uh, if you ask God for something that's praying to them no we have actual prayer with movements and prostrations and anyhow uh, learn it take it easy but once you pray brother American dragon once you stop praying your first salah it's an amazing experience subhanallah this is the time when you're closest to your creator this is the time where you can ask him anything you want and I tell you what, subhanAllah, you are at a very few state right now. You must have tons and tons and tons of good deeds. The good, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Welcome back, akhi night. So, believe it or not, you have done nothing, but yet you are, you have more good deeds than we can ever imagine. 
because all of your past life, all of your sins in the past, all of the, the, the bad mischiefs you have done, all, all transformed by the generosity of Allah into a good deeds. So you're just building on a, a white, clean slate here. You can just imagine. So, alhamdulillah, that, that by itself is such a huge gift that you just received. But once you stop praying, life will definitely become very different to you. Uh, you will start gaining so much inner peace, subhanAllah, it's amazing. Uh, it, if you need any uh, links or anything like that or any uh, uh, programs to teach you, please ask us. You know, we would like you to stay with us. Stay away from the debate rooms. Stay. Okay, you have so many. Okay, use them though. Use them. Okay, unfortunately, because it's the internet and we only can communicate through voice and links and emails, uh, we're limited to that. Unless, you know, we don't even open cameras in, in uh, Muslim rooms. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if it's not too much to, to ask of you, um, Wallahi, take it from a brother who loves you for nothing, for the sake of Allah. And I'm sure all of us feel the same way. Do not go to the debate rooms right now. Just, just get, you know, just a week or two. All right, until you, 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 you start praying, do not go to any of the debate rooms, Akhi. Wallahi, it's, it's going to make your faith less. And you're going to start becoming yourself again. Like the good old self I'm talking about. That's great. That's wonderful to hear, Akhi. Also, you, you must read the Quran and learn about your Lord, what he, what your Lord tells you to do, your Creator. Uh, right now, we are in Ramadan, the, mo the month of fasting. Uh, for a person who never fasted in their life, Sister Maryam, that's a, such, a, such a, a hardship to them. Okay, so, it's, of course, he has to fast as a Muslim. Uh, there's no excuse not to, unless you're sick or you're traveling. You have these two excuses. If you're sick or, or, or fasting is going to damage you in any way, shape or form, Allah is merciful and He doesn't want you to fast. Only fast when you can, inshallah, and you have a good body and able to. And only fast if... Uh, and you, you can break your fasting if you're traveling. So if you have a... Uh, if you're traveling a distance of, uh, let's say, around... I'm not sure exact, the exact distance, but it's around 70 miles or so. Allahu A'lam, not the exact measurement, but but 70 miles, if you're traveling that distance, you're allowed to break your fasting, if you want. But fasting a day in Ramadan, uh, uh, subhanAllah, is, is uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, if you miss the day in Ramadan, as if you can never ever make it up, even if you fasted all of eternity. There's so much reward in fasting to Allah, because you're fasting, you're showing your Creator that not only it's all an obligation, but it's also you showing him that you appreciate him, and you're doing it, doing it for him, and he will uh, he will reward you greatly because of this. So, Akhi, uh, you're just learning the ABCs about Islam. Islam makes sense absolutely 100 percent, and every obligation in Islam will make sense to you. Um, it, the, nothing will not make sense to you in Islam except Shaitan, Satan, and yourself. That's the only two things that will never make sense to you. Satan, Shaitan, and the haters. <laughs> the haters must be added there. Because they're trying to pull you back to the, to, 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 to the hellfire. Life, life, life is about a black and white. You see, it's, there's no gray, shady area there. You must choose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in the Quran. إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ sabila wa إِمَّا shakiran wa إِمَّا kafura. We have showed him the way. We have showed him the way, the human. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. You either choose to be on the right path, or you choose to be on the, on the uh, uh, path of darkness, and it's your choice. See, Allah gave us that as Muslims and non-Muslims. You see, we're, we're free to do it all. We're free to neglect the deen. We're free to do whatever we want. Okay, so it's not like it's an obligation and you must do it. Yes, it is if you're a believer and you want to seek the word of Allah and, and go to Jannah one day, inshallah. You know, the minute you die or the minute I die, 
That's it. That's our judgment day. We'll start there. You know, we have no no second chances. We won't be coming back to earth. Okay? And judgment will start there. The second you die, when they bury you, judgment will start. In, this, in Islam, there's a question and there's an answer to everything. So, it's not like you start wandering off and using your own intellect for a question. In Islam, it's all, all the answers are laid out for you to, 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 to understand. We know as Muslims, while we were while we are here, while we were created, uh, what's the purpose of life? We know what's going to happen to us when we die, the moment of death, after death, in the in the grave, after the grave, when we rise to meet our Lord, what's going to happen in Judgment Day? What's going to happen in heaven and hell? We know all these, Alhamdulillah, because of the Prophet's teaching, Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, and also what Quran teaches about life. So. You you are actually if 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 Islam was was a hundred point you you have quarter of a point not even and you have no defenses so anyone can ask you a question in your flunk right now meaning how can you debate or how can you invite someone to Islam if you if you only know the the basic you don't even know the basics. And, but it doesn't make you any any less than any of us, by the way. With all the knowledge that you have, Wallahi, 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 and it's Ramadan now. You are better than all of us. Wallahi, he is better than all of the people in Pal Talk and maybe all of the people on the planet. Wallahi, in the sight of Allah. Not in our sight only, but in the sight of Allah, the Creator. You have left everything behind and you submitted to Him. Do you, you understand how much reward you have? Do you understand the, the gift that you're in now? The blessings? Allahu Akbar! During one of the battles, Sister, Sister Maryam and Brother American, the battles between Muslims and the Roman Empire, Khalid ibn al-Walid, and you will hear of this name so many times, Khalid ibn al-Walid never ever lost a battle uh, uh, before he was a Christ, uh, Muslim and after he was the best warrior one of the, the, the geniuses of war uh, many of his tactics are still being used in the war academies around the world and even universities he he won a hundred state straight battles a hundred straight battles never lost a single one of them and he was taken he was taken by the Khalifa right at his peak when he was still able to win all the battle for the Muslims he beat the Roman Empire by himself him and the very few thousand that he had if you go back and read about the history of Islam remember the Roman Empire uh, uh, that conquered the Middle East and all of the uh, 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 all the Asian countries Egypt and all of the uh, North, North uh, Africa right uh, American remember uh, a little bit of history there. <coughs> well, anyway, read, read. One day you'll come across it. Uh, he was taking. He was being. He was uh, asked to resign by the Khalifa Omar. He asked him to step down, and all of the Muslims were so shocked and upset, and they said the Khalifa have done a grave error. This guy just beat the Romans on his own. Why would he ask him to leave? Oh, you have? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Omar ibn al-Khattab, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah be pleased with Omar, said, he said, I don't want people to think that victory is coming from, Omar, from, from Khalid. Victory is only from Allah. You see, that, that's a hundred percent faith in Allah. It, it's not from men. Allah gave him the power. Allah will take it back any time. Victory is from Allah. Now, one of the battle was called an Yarmouk. Not Al Yarmouk. There was another battle actually. Uh, when the Muslims and they were around twenty-two thousand, and the Romans were about seventy-five thousand men, and usually American dragon. 
99.9 of the time, the Muslim was, will always win. And remember how the Romans used to take pride in the, their legionnaires and their army, and they're the well-equipped, and the best training, the best men, the masculine men, and da-da-da. And these Bedouin, who were nothing a, a, a few days ago, became Muslims, and they become the fiercest fighters with barely any equipment. But they go to battle seeking the reward of Allah to either be victorious or be martyrs. No one can defeat that mentality because not only it's a mentality, it's a belief and, and, and they know and trust that victory is from Allah. So the leader of the Romans in one of the battles, his name was George, uh, was facing a 22,000 Muslim He's got 77,000 Romans. Romans, legionnaire, you're talking the, the, the very best army at the time. So, usually what happened is the leader of each army would meet and they fight, and one of them will be victorious, so that will boost the morale of each army. So, George approached Khalid in the middle. You can just picture two armies. And George, the leader of the Romans, approached Khalid, and he heard so much about Khalid. He, he was, he was appreciating this man. He likes this man, but he didn't go there to fight him. He went there to question him. So Khalid, as always, went to you know went to uh, for a duel. Uh, duel and he wa he wanted to fight him, and uh, and George said, "I'm not here to fight you." And he said, "What do you want then?" He said, "Tell me about Islam." The people, people are about to fight and kill one another, and this leader of one of the, the groups is asking the other, "Tell me about Islam." He said, "Islam is to submit to, to Allah Almighty, to say Ashhadu an La ilaha illallah wa Muhammad Rasulullah." You were, you were born to be a Muslim. He explained to him Islam in very few words. He said, "Are you fighting this for honor or money, or, or, or are you, are you pushed it for this battle?" He said, "I fight this because I enjoy doing this. This is for the sake of Allah." I'm fighting in the name of Allah. Back then, you guys conquered us and we're trying to repel you back, re repel you back uh, as invaders. Uh, the, the man had Islam in him, but he, would, he was unable to, uh, to talk to anyone. The first one he ever spoke with was Khalid. And he said, you know, what do I need to do to become Muslim? To uh, submit to Allah. He said, all you need to do is, is uh, stay to Shahada. Say your shahada. He said, What shall I do? What shall I say it? He said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. There's no deity worth it, uh, worthy of worship except Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. So he said it. George, the leader of the, 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 the said it. And he became Muslim. And him and Khalid went to the other side where the Muslims are. And you can just imagine the Muslims in that battle, you know, they were out of this world. And, and the battle started, subhanAllah, George was the side of the Muslim. He, he was killed the first five minutes. They were so mad at him, they just went at him. Okay? He died. And that's a man who went to heaven without even a single prayer or an Islamic duty or an obligation. SubhanAllah. How lucky he was. And he was, inshallah, straight to Jannah. He's a shaheed, as, as a matter of fact. I mean, he will get the highest, the highest level in Jannah. So you are you are just like George now. Am I speaking to myself? Are you guys still here inshallah? Alright, <laughs> alhamdulillah. So uh, I you know personally what do I wish for you as a brother in Islam that I respect and like a lot? Is do not lose this. Build on it. Right now if you go into the hate rooms and you stop um immersing yourself in your good old life, you will you will become just like your old self again. You will lose everything you have learned. Uh, I've heard so many people after they take the shahada uh, they just they just walk away. And two years down the road they go, Well I was a Muslim, I tried it, it didn't work. It's not a club. It's not a club you join. It's not a membership. It's a life code. It's a, it's a, it's a code of life. It's 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 living your life based on on that ilaha illallah and what it requires of you. 
and you know, I say this and I remind myself to better myself as a Muslim. Because believe me, no one is 100%. We all have horrible, horrible mistakes. And Brother Dragon, do not look at the actions of Muslims as, as if they represent Islam. No one does. No one does. Except one man and one man alone. And that is our Prophet. Our messengers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and, peace and blessing be upon him. That's it. He's the only one who can say, I represent Islam. Anyone else, forget about it. Also, stay away from people that call themselves Shia. They call themselves Muslimin and they're not. Okay, focus. That's why you should stay in this room, inshallah, in the good Muslim rooms. Do not open your PM to anybody, akhi. Just for a week or two. Once you have a little bit of knowledge, please do whatever you like. But just you know, do yourself a favor. Uh, uh, you're a dear brother. We would like to keep you that way, you know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, uh, knows your heart. And that's why probably He led you here, led you to the stand of, for our Prophet. Right. Okay. Okay, Akhi, if you, if you like to take the mic and talk about whatever. I have no more questions as far as your story. Jazakallah uh, khair. You know, talk about whatever. If you have any question in Islam, if you have any, uh, 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 if, you're, if you're wondering about something, ask us. You know, ask us anything. Ask us why do we not be pork? Why do we not, uh, we're not allowed to drink? Why do we not allowed to, we're not allowed to fornicate? Why, why are we not allowed to such and such? Okay, the, the, the very evil things, you know. No problem. Take your mic and, and uh, finish what you, you want. If you want to say hello to us or something. Jazakallah khair. I thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, Chris, welcome back, Chris. Good to see you, friend. At uh, the mic screen, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you. 